So in this video, I just wanted to do a quick comparison between the Lamy LX and the Lamy 2000. And these are just uh, two fountain pens. If you're looking for a Lamy fountain pen, you're probably gonna consider these two. Uh, it may not seem like an obvious comparison, but I wanted to put them side by side so that people could see what they looked like and get the size comparison, then we could run through some of the features. Uh, you know, the LX is a, a pretty high-end fountain pen. It has an MSRP of, I believe, around 60 some odd dollars. LAM 2000 has an MSRP around maybe like 160, 170 dollars around there. Street price for LAM 2000 is maybe like 125, maybe 140, something like that. And the uh, LX you could see going from anywhere between 30 to 50 dollars. Uh, and basically, the what happens is people, a lot of people buy an LX or an AL Star or even a Safari and then eventually they want to get a more serious pen and that means something with a gold nib and then you jump up to the Lama 2000. And this is really, uh, I, can, I would consider this a best in class pen in that sub $150 price range. It really is, I think, an exceptional pen and kind of a no brainer if you're looking for a, a sort of a more grown up pen. That said, uh, many, many people, myself included, uh, don't really feel the need to spend over $100 on a fountain pen. I could appreciate the design, it's just not really something that appeals to me. Because now I'm concerned about using the pen, not enjoying it. So, uh, Lamy 2000 has this uh, Macrolon body. It's sort of a brush look to it. It's a heavy plastic, like a fiberglass. Has a spring clip, which is very cool. And some really nice features to it too. Uh, this is obviously wonderfully made, this clip. It says Lamy right there. You can see it's very tiny, but it does say Lamy right there. There's some writing on the bottom. It says Germany. Have a nice cut mark here on the uh, edge of the cap. Clean gloss finial and uh, just a little piece of metal on the insert there. As for the pen itself, again, the, the major differentiator here is it has this gold nib. Obviously it's a hood, hooded nib, but the what's really gonna make this pen cross the $100 mark is that it has a gold nib. This is the medium. Here you can see it's a super clean design. And in fact, the fill mechanism uh, is inside comes from unscrewing this uh, and that's not really pertinent to the review yet but you can see that there's essentially that seam is hidden here and it's really almost impossible to make out just a really well designed pen there's another seam right here it's a little bit easier to see and then you can see the if the pen has ink or not uh, this i would call it a fill gauge but since you can't really see anything about how it's filled, it's either it has ink or it doesn't. Uh, and the, the fill mechanism here, which you can check out in my other reviews, uh, is built into the pen. So you can't use this pen with a cartridge. Instead, it has a built-in fill mechanism. Lamy LX, again, this is like an upgraded AL Star, which is in turn an upgraded Safari. Has an aluminum body, has a springy metal clip, I believe it's steel, has this metal screw type in the uh, finial, or I guess it's maybe a bolt head uh, or a screw head, I guess it would be a screw head. Has, uh, I have it with a, a silver nib, so I wanted to upgrade it, it but it comes stock with a black nib. Uh, the nice thing about this nib is that you could pull it right off and put a different Lamy Safari LX or AL Star or a few other designs nib right on there. So this pen uh, could easily put on any range of nibs that sell for about $14 each, or you can go ahead and upgrade it to uh, the gold nibs. Like they're called like the L57 or something like that. And uh, they have gold nibs in either silver or black that are maybe about between 90 and hundred dollars. This uses that triangular section that you hold on to, which is definitely a love it or hate it thing. 
and then it has uh, it opens up and you could use it with a converter or with a cartridge. Size wise, uh, the Lamy 2000 is definitely smaller and a cleaner size. The Safaris and the LX, sorry, and the LX and them have uh, a larger, bulkier size that is definitely iconic in its own way, but it, it is like definitely on the large and bulky side. A lot of it has to do just with this size of the cap. Once you take the caps off, the differences between the two pens isn't gigantic, but with the cap on, you can really see the difference. Uh, so between the two, I would definitely recommend the Lamy 2000. I do think this is a really exceptional pen and a great deal for the money. I'm not a big fan of the AL Star or the LX. I just don't think they offer much bang for your buck over the Safari. So I would say if you want to kind of go big or go home and kind of uh, celebrate with something and buy yourself a beautiful $100 plus pen, then you have the Lamy 2000. If you are considering the LX or the All-Star, I would say just go ahead and save your money, get a Safari because these ones aren't sufficiently nicer than the Safari. They use the same nibs and this aluminum material, it actually doesn't hold up as well as the plastic on the Safari. So it, it seems like, oh man, I'm getting an all metal pen. That's so great. But the, the metal doesn't actually outlast the uh, plastic of a Safari design and it's uh. It's like barely any heavier. It doesn't feel substantial because it is aluminum. So the changes are really pretty minor. Uh, this is actually rollerball. So this isn't a perfect comparison, but you could see it uses the stainless, you know, the matching clip instead of a black clip. Has a cool contrasty logo. This one has a kind of hidden logo. So like the differences are pretty minor, whereas this goes for 50 to 60. This one goes for like 16 or 18, something around there. So there you have it, a quick roundup of Lamis. Thanks for watching.